yo, 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 yo. another lesson based on construction. So I want you guys to use your big brains, use your noggin. We're going to be talking numbers today. So if you're not a math person, you are today. So I want you guys to think what are some numbers that construction workers might need to know? One of them might be measurements, right? They might have to know how big a door has to be, right? Maybe how wide or big a room has to be. Also, numbers, my favorite is money. So they have to know what their budget is, right? We talked about how when we have to build things, we need the permit. The permit has to include how many nails we need, how many screws, how many doorknobs. Those things aren't free. We have to figure out how much they cost, right? So construction workers need to know the cost of materials. They need to know how many materials and how big things have to be. They also have to know the quantity of every single material in entire building. So not just like we need 20,000 nails for a home, we need 5,000 nails for this room, we need 5,000 nails for this room, and so on, right? They have to know all these numbers. These numbers tell everyone what is going to be essential to have to build the building. But there's one more set of numbers, and it is the most important number that construction workers need. And that is the due date. How many of you guys have had a due date before? Whether it's your homework, it's a project, it's an assignment, our parents probably have due dates for bills, right? The due dates are super, super important because the due date tells us when our project has to be done. And construction workers, any construction project is just that. It's a project that has to be done by a certain day, right? And behind every building project, there's a building owner who's gonna be owning the building once it's done. And they're counting on the construction team to be done with it by the certain due date. What do you guys think happens if they don't finish by then? Mm, yeah, there's usually some consequences. So unfortunately, it can cost them lots of monies if they don't finish it in time. So maybe a project that they were going to earn $100,000 on, if they don't meet it by the due date and things go wrong, they can end up owing, or it can end up costing up to even 200,000. So let's double that and they end up losing out on money. That's not fun, no one wants to lose out on money, right? Being a building contractor is very stressful. You're constantly worrying and being stressed out and making sure and wanting to make sure that you have enough men on the site, you have enough materials that are going to arrive on time, each individual has to get paid and they have to be on a schedule and you have to meet the due date. Sounds really stressful, right? And so I'm sure there's days that maybe some of us as believers, we feel stressed, right? Maybe as much as even a, co a building contractor. Sometimes we get super stressed with everything that's going on with school, right? Some of you guys told me before on Sundays, some of you guys have school, you have sports practices, you have other extracurricular activities, and then you gotta go home and do chores. That's a lot going on, and that's fair to be stressed. And sometimes as much as we try to live our lives for Jesus and do what's right, there's times we can get discouraged because we mess up, right? How many of you guys have messed up before? I definitely have, right? All of us have. And sometimes we mess up over and 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 over again because we're human, and that's sometimes just how we are. Sometimes we wonder if God's gonna forgive us again, right? How many of you guys have kind of maybe wondered, maybe you did something too bad, and I don't know if God's gonna forgive me? A lot of us have, right? Even adults think like that. 
But in the Bible, Paul tells us and he encourages us and he reassures us that no matter what we've done, we shouldn't be fearful of God not forgiving us because everything works on God's timeline. And because of that, just like we talked about last week, God's doing a work in us and he's gonna bring it to completion, right? Just like last week we talked about unfinished projects, we're kind of an unfinished project right now because God is still working in each and every one of us, but that working, it's present tense, right? So it's still happening. It's not gonna be like we mess up too many times and God's like, yeah, no, I give up. He's still working and working with us so that way he can bring a good work to completion in each and every one of us. So it doesn't matter if we mess up, right? It doesn't matter if we mess up over and over. What matters is that we ask God to forgive us and we repent. How many of you guys remember what repenting means? We talked about it a couple weeks ago, right? It's when we try to turn away from what we did wrong and we try to stop doing that and do right. But no matter if we mess up, and sometimes I wanna ask you guys, how many of you guys sometimes when we're praying, we get stuck? because We don't know what to say and we're not sure what to say. In these verses, we're gonna read about how there's this word called intercessory. Can you guys try saying that? It's a big one. Intercessory, right? And the Holy Spirit is our intercessor, right? So we're gonna read in Romans in our Bible, and that's gonna be in the New Testament. We're gonna be in Romans chapter eight, verses 26 through 39. So Romans chapter eight, verse 26, all the way to verse 39. So verse 26, in the same way, The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he searches our hearts and he knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we all know that all things God works for the good for those who love him. So if you love God, he's gonna work things things out for the good, right? And he works them out according to his purpose. So whatever his plans are, he'll work them out to make sure they go right back to that. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. That's you and me. And those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So essentially, we're more than conquerors, right? Even though we mess up when we fall, we can get right back up because God sent Jesus for us. So what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Do you guys think anybody's bigger than God? Heck no, techno, right? He did not spare his own son, Jesus, but he gave him up for all of us. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen. It is God who justifies, who then is the one who condemns? No one, right? Only God can really make these rules. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for each of us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution of famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from God's love or from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So essentially, the the big point in here, the most important point that we're taking away is that nothing can separate us from God's love once we've accepted him into our heart, right? It doesn't matter what we've done when we've messed up. It might be something so bad, we don't even, we don't wanna talk about it because it's so bad. But even those things, God forgives us for them as long as we ask him to. So, This passage from Paul begins by letting us know that God knows our weaknesses even better than we do. Even if we don't know them or we don't want to talk about them, God still knows them, right? He knows what we need even before we ask, and he's faithfully working in and out of every each and one of us so that we overcome these weaknesses, because all of us have weaknesses. And Paul also reminds us that our sins are forgiven, right? 
yes, it's such a great feeling, right? That we don't have to carry that burden. Like imagine you guys wearing a backpack with all of your work in it in school and everything. And imagine if every single sin you did in that backpack, it'd be really heavy, right? But God would take that backpack off and say, no, I've got this. You don't have to carry this anymore because that's what his forgiveness is for each and every one of us. And so God's gonna finish that work and bring it to what? What's that C word? To completion, right? In each and every one of us because he loves us just that much. And so I want you guys to think what's so hard about deadlines, right? We get them in school. We have due dates for assignments, whether they're big or small. Adults have them at work. Kids have them at school. Teachers give them for almost everything, right? They give you deadlines for returning permission slips, for maybe scholastic book orders when the book fair comes. Deadlines help you and your teachers and kind of just most people in life continue moving forward essentially just through life, right? They let us know what's expected so that we can try to plan accordingly. The trouble with deadline, deadlines is that we don't always look ahead properly, right? How many of you guys procrastinate? That means if your teacher assigned you a project last month, you didn't tell your parents till last night and it's due tomorrow, right? That means you're waiting almost until the last minute when you had all this time to work on it, but you wait closer to the last minute. I'll tell you guys a secret, Ms. B procrastinates still. So it, it's not, it's, I'm not gonna say it's okay, but I still do it. But a lot of us procrastinate, right? Because it's a hard habit to get out of. And so, even though our timing might be a little bit off, right? It may seem that God is putting us off at times, right? Maybe sometimes we put off a project. Sometimes for us, when we're praying, it might feel like God is putting us off because we don't necessarily hear the answer to our prayers. Maybe we don't hear it the way we want to hear it. But in the reality of it, only God knows the plan that he has for us and he knows the timeline for it. So sometimes if we're praying and we're not sure if we're getting an answer, God may not be saying no, he just may be saying not yet. We don't always know because he has a plan in that timeline and it's a perfect plan, right? So God doesn't really sleep or slumber, slumber or get lazy with our prayers, right? He's always at work. Think about how many people are in the world and everybody, no matter when they pray, God hears their prayers and he knows what we need before we ask, each and every one of us. And he's faithful in all things. So if we're already in Christ, we've already accepted Jesus as our savior in our heart and we want to live differently for Jesus, God's at work in each and every one of our hearts. You may not be able to see the progress, progress every single day, but he's slowly but surely building that strong foundation inside of you, creating you to be more Christ-like and be more like Jesus in all these wonderful, amazing ways. And like the scriptures we memorize in Sunday school and whatnot, they're not just to do it. It's so that way you can hide God's word in your heart and be able to use them later. And nail by nail, like with all these, we talk about with nails and 20,000 in a home, nail by nail, brick by brick, no matter what work is going on in us, God's not gonna quit, no matter what. He'll finish exactly what he started. So even if we feel kind of sad or discouraged or we do something we don't wanna talk about, God's, God knows it happened, right? We just have to come to him and pray that he'll forgive us and help us to do better and stand right back up, head up high, and continue walking to try to be just as much like Christ as we can. All right, you guys ready to pray out? Let's bow our head, close our eyes, fold our hands. All right, dear God, thank you just for a wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for an amazing summer. I pray, Lord, that you help us to remember that you are creating a good work in each and every one of us. I pray that you help us to remember that no matter what we do, that we can be forgiven and we can move forward and that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to die for us so that we could be forgiven and live with you in heaven. In your name we pray, amen. Bye guys.